I've been getting a few questions. I know I promised this a while, but at any rate, um, I want to go over how to spec a, a, a trailer properly. So first, let me explain. You have to identify what you want to do with it first before you do anything. So if it's going to be for storage, is you going places, what are you going to put in it? What do you plan to do? So once you write that down, um, and of course you want to identify a budget, but to be honest, you see a low price trailer or even a medium price trailer, they're all built like crap. And what justifies half of the price is to transport it to your dealer or to you. Most of these things are made uh, in the Midwest or the Southeast, uh, at least in my neck of the woods. Uh, so the closer you get, to the manufacturer, clearly the cheaper the trailer is going to be. But now you have to move it. You have so you have to pick your poison. So logistically, if you think you're better off driving closer, like for example, this one I met the guy halfway in West Virginia because I was going there anyway. So that was worth it to me. Considering the gas prices now, maybe not so much. I don't know. That's up to you. So uh, a couple things to think about though. At the bare minimum, the gross weight of the trailer, that's literally all the weight of the trailer, is what it can tow based on the size of the axles. So what I learned from just experience, because I messed up plenty of times and this ain't my first trailer, I've been towing stuff for a very long time and I can tell you that what they say is a freaking lie. So whatever you think you're gonna take right and you add that up so let's say for example you add up all your weight and it's going to be three thousand pounds so now you say oh i got two thirty five hundred pound axles which would gross out at seven thousand that's max tear off the trailer whatever the trailer weighs usually it's about twelve thousand pounds or something somewhere in that realm and that's your that's your uh net weight right so it's bullshit I, i'm telling you Take what you think you're going to tow. So in my example, I said you're going to tow, you're going to put 3,000 pounds in this trailer. Well, double it. So now expect to have 6,000 pounds, and that's what you expect the trailer for. I don't care what you think you're going to put in it. Go big or go home, brother, because I could, I could tell you, out of experience, you're always shooting low, and you really should be aiming high. Because even this, this is... Uh, this is rated, these are these are the next size ups, right? So this is like, a, instead of a 7,000 7, pound trailer, this is a 10.5. Uh, um, and even this, for just what I put in, just this typical silly equipment for interior construction, and it's uh, it, it's sitting where it should sit. Uh, you know, the, the brakes are a little bigger, the wheels are a little bigger, you're getting more, and now I'm telling you, I'm working out of these things. So uh, that's another theory, but my point is, with the weight regarding, always double what you think you're going to put. Always. That's a rule of thumb for anything. That goes for the length, too. So if you have whatever you're... Let's say it's a motorcycle, right? And the motorcycle takes up 8 feet. Well, you better get a 12. And that should be a rule of thumb. Even if it's a V-nose like this. like um, And here, I could even show you... Um, the, 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 the other things you have to look at is the axles, right? So... If you're going places, you know, usually they have a leaf spring system. I always spec torsions because there's not one thing that can friggin' break on this. And if you do break something, you just knock this apart and away you go. Um, I undercoated this and it's still rusting. Okay, I gotta do it again. You know, that, that's, but you always want tubing. The, you know, minimum, minimum 21 on center. This is, this is a 16. So that adds weight. Again, that adds weight. But this thing can can take what I'm expecting to put in it. You also want to look at where they connect the, the hitch V. So in this case, this V always goes should go towards the front of your axle no less than two feet. So if you've seen they got the hitch welded up there, you're going to break the friggin' hitch. Or you got to do something to where that's supported more. Because if you put the thing on and it's real tongue heavy, it's going to get away on you. And uh, you end up, that's when you see a landscaping trailer half the time. And, you know, it's all messed up. Got road rash all over because they drive it like they stole it because they probably did. But um, that's why. 
So the other thing is you got to look at your tires. So half the time they put these shitty, shitty tires on the truck because they're trying to they're trying to save weight. They're trying to save cost. I get it. But at the same time, if you're going to put what you're going to put, you always want at the minute. I put E's on these things. I always put an E-rated tire. I don't care. Single axle, double axle, E-rated tire, radial. And I never had a problem, knock on wood. I never had a blowout. Never had one thing go wrong. Well, you could put these, these ply bias tires on with no belting in them. They wobble. They shake. Um, you, know, it's, it, you know, it's a lot of weight. You know, you, you know 10,000 pounds ain't nothing to sneeze at. So that's also important. The other thing I, I, I advise is um, you always keep a spare harness in your truck. You keep a jack, a real jack, in the trailer at all times. I don't care what you're towing. Uh, you know, the other thing is you think you think of safety. So so just, just that, a couple fuses. Keep all that stuff in a box in the trailer because guess what? You might have it in your truck, but your brother or your sister or whoever's towing this thing one day might not. So if you have... A, a, a road hazard safety kit in the trailer. I don't care what it is. If it's going on the road once, if it's going on the road 12 times, that's a very smart thing to have. I've been there. I've done that. I learned, and that's that's the best thing to do. Um, the other thing I, f I find is, if you, I think this is open. I don't care if you see what I got. You know what I mean? But, see, um, you always look at the roofing. So, when you look at the struts, how they put these struts, you want them standing vertical like they do because they built this like california style so so these guys they put this is an arising trailer they're not paying me but i, I went around the block arising in my area was the best bang for the buck but they they have this rectangular tubing and they stood it up vertical which is good because you know it snows around where i am and that's um that's important i always throw e-track in there whether they do it whether you do it I'm telling you, best thing to do, and then also before you do anything to the trailer, before you load it up, you put Rhino liner, whatever you want on the floor, and that, that holds a lot of weight, um, a lot of more durable that way. Uh, again, you know, having a, a dress trailer with plywood, it adds weight, but that's how I roll, you know, and, and I make everything modular so it can come out. If I got to put a, a, you know, a mower or something in here crazy, I still can. Um, now, the other thing is because I got barn doors but some people put these slam latches on it depends on your nature but I take the master keys out this one's always mastered um, you look online you go to global link you can get the yellow key you pull this out with the yellow key you put in with your lock and I always key these alike and then I never you know all my trailers one key but then at least some some D bag with a master key can't come in and open my trailer up um, even if you're gonna get in, you're gonna get, I mean, you're gonna get in, bro. But uh, again, I got all that. That's why I don't let her anything. I'm all good. Uh, what else? What else? Oh, the skin. Always upgrade the skin, the, the, you know, the, the, the siding of the trailer because, um, this was a .30. My, a couple other ones I got, I was being cheap and they were the, the thinner one. It's like the default, but it, I mean, dude, you just touch it and it, and it dents. So, uh, you know, just that, that's. That's the best of it, but I'm telling you, I think the the number one thing I learned about all this is you always do torsion axles and you always double your weight capacity for what you think you're going to tow. Don't lie to yourself because you don't want to buy this thing and, and it's underrated. And again, with the reason for the torsion axles, those shackles and those springs, the way they make that, it's garbage, especially when you're backing up. I mean, if I got to do a, a weird K-turn with these things, the axles don't move. There's no pinging or powing or complaining so um it's it's they're very tight i never have a problem with torsion axles work worth the extra 500 bucks for each axle i'm telling you you'll never be disappointed um if you're gonna sit there and i don't know it's never gonna move you're gonna use it as storage trailer uh, okay you know but um in my opinion your you, the, the maintenance involved down the road is severe severely less with these i don't have to really do i mean besides greasing and everything and making sure the brakes are all right i mean that's about it you don't really got to do much uh and that then that's really it you know um you know everything else you know you can kind of do what you prefer i like to, to not hit my head that's cool you know so you make them tall enough uh other than that i'd like to see what you guys think